Hey there, my friends, Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, founder here at the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. Today's video is all about alcohol and weight loss. Do they mix? Can you, if you wanna lose weight, enjoy alcohol on occasion? Should you abstain completely? What are some of the health problems with alcohol? What are some of the potential benefits of alcohol? We're gonna cover all of that in today's video. And this is a highly requested topic that a lot of our Fit Father and Fit Mother program members ask us for, because let's face it, for many people, alcohol is a part of life. It means enjoying the occasional drink is a great way to relax. And I wanna say this, if you're a person who does not drink and you abstain from alcohol, and there's a lot of great reasons to do so, I still recommend you listen to this video. It's gonna give you greater perspective on how the metabolism works, particularly how your body metabolizes alcohol, and may actually strengthen your resolve to not drink. And if you're a person who does enjoy the occasional drink, we're gonna demystify some of these great questions like, do alcohol calories count? What are the best drinks to have? And how can I enjoy occasional drink without derailing my fitness progress? I know you're gonna enjoy today's video. So buckle up, take some notes, and let's dive on in. In prep for this video, I was looking up some of the history of alcohol. And I think it's fascinating. I wanna start there and I wanna read a quote. Discovery of late Stone Age jugs suggests that intentionally fermented beverages existed at least as early as 10,000 BC. So this is amazing because alcohol has been a central part of many human cultures for over 10,000 years. And what's even more fascinating is close human primates, apes, chimpanzees, they actually have the same kind of enzymes to break down alcohol because a lot of these animals eat fruit. And what happens is certain fruits as they go through the process of rotting, actually turn their sugars into sugar alcohol. So for example, if you've ever had a banana, at first the banana is very green, and over time as the banana ages and decays, it gets more yellow, and eventually it gets brown and very mottled. And if you've ever eaten a really brown decayed banana, it actually tastes like it has hints of alcohol, because it does. A lot of the sugars in fruit turn into sugar alcohols. So primates have developed some of these enzymes to break down alcohol, we needed to do so. So it's really baked into our human machinery. Our liver has the ability to break down alcohol and turn it into something called acetate that we can use for normal metabolism. So this is important. It seems kind of hardwired. And before we get into some of the metabolism of this, I just want to say this. Excessive amounts of alcohol are absolutely detrimental for your health, period, no question asked. When we look at chronic alcoholics and large-time large drinkers, their brain shrinks, they have muscle wasting, they have liver toxicity and damage, and it causes all hosts of problems to pretty much every organ. Your body views alcohol as a metabolic toxin. This is a very key point, because when we put alcohol into the system, the liver's job to detox this, it sees alcohol as the priority, and it starts metabolizing alcohol at the expense of metabolizing a lot of the other nutrients. That's what we're gonna talk about in just a second. But before we get there, we actually have to talk about the amount of alcohol and how we define this. And pretty much alcohol is defined in terms of number of units. That's how we kind of figure. So your body can actually metabolize one unit of alcohol per hour. And a unit is equivalent to one shot. Uh, one glass of small glass of wine or one light beer is around 1.5 units. A whole bottle of wine has around nine units of alcohol. So the amount of alcohol matters. So if you're having, there's a big difference what happens to your metabolism if you had three or four drinks versus if you had one, we'll get to there in a second. Now, when you drink, what happens is alcohol actually starts to get absorbed in your stomach, and then it goes to your intestines, and it gets absorbed primarily in the intestines, and it enters the bloodstream. And the blood, as things get absorbed, it first passes through the liver, and the liver's job is to detoxify things. So the liver gets hard at work at breaking down alcohol and turning it into acetate, something it can use to metabolize. So this brings into the question, do alcohol calories count? And the answer is, yes, they do. Each gram of alcohol has around seven calories. A gram of fat has nine, a gram of protein and carbohydrates has four. So alcohol is fairly energetically dense. So this is why, let's just say you have a glass of wine, a big, large glass of wine, maybe 250 milliliters, it can have a couple hundred calories in it. And the calories from alcohol do matter in the sense that your body actually has this stored energy from the alcohol, and as it's metabolizing those calories, it's gonna use them for energy. What's fascinating though is the alcohol itself, those calories that come from alcohol, aren't readily stored as fat. Your body has a very hard time actually converting alcohol to fat. It needs to break down the alcohol to acetate, and then it has to go through this complex metabolic process to turn it into fat. It just really doesn't happen. And this is why we actually find a lot of chronic alcoholics are actually very skinny. They've actually had muscle wasting. Now, what happens though, as your liver is breaking down that alcohol and oxidizing it and burning it for calories, 
It's actually storing fat and carbohydrates that you eat. So this is the thing, when you drink alcohol, your fat burning metabolism gets blunted while your body's oxidizing the alcohol. And this is where people get into trouble. Alcohol itself is not gonna get converted into fat, but the food and the stuff that you eat in the presence of alcohol, when your fat burning is suppressed, can be easily stored as fat. Fat in particular. So one of the worst things you could probably do is drink a bunch of alcohol and then drink a bunch of olive oil, pure fat. Your body's gonna readily store that fat which normally would have a different metabolic process not in the presence of alcohol. So this is a key point. And one of the main punchlines of our approach here at the Fit Father Project, Fit Mother Project, it's that when you do drink alcohol, it is really good to only eat protein and fiber. So basically like protein and greens, lean protein. So it might be some fish and some broccoli or some chicken and a salad is a much better meal and experience for your body metabolically speaking in the presence of alcohol than let's say having a glass of wine with a burger. The burger has a lot of fat, it has a lot of carbohydrates. As your body is metabolizing the alcohol, it's gonna be storing a lot of this stuff that normally it would burn off and do a, a more normal metabolic uh, process. So alcohol changes the way your metabolism works, suppresses your fat burning. So we need to be careful about the kinds of food we eat. Now we need to look at how often should you drink if your goal is to lose weight. And I can say this anecdotally from helping over 40,000 people through our programs, that if you're drinking more than once per week, you're gonna be hindering your weight loss results. And in fact, for the best results, it may be best to abstain and even go less than that. But you can drink once per week and still see great weight loss results. And I recommend you cap yourself at roughly two drinks and make sure that when you are drinking, you're choosing things that are lower in sugar. It is a much better idea to have something like a vodka soda, which again, is pretty much just alcohol that your body's not gonna convert to fat versus something like a margarita, which has alcohol, but also has all the sugar as well. So that's not a good scenario. And let's say you went to Mexican food and you had the margarita and you had the chips and guacamole and you had the other fat that comes from the cheese and all the other things. That is a recipe for weight gain. It is a much different experience than let's say that you just went to Mexican food and you had some grilled chicken breast fajita and you didn't have any carbohydrates with it. You just had some greens. That is a lot better for your body. So I would limit it to drinking once per week. If you abstain completely, you're gonna get even better benefits because again, alcohol does add calories, but remember those calories are not gonna get stored as fat. So keep your protein high. Keep your veggies high when you are drinking alcohol. Even better, you can. Uh, there's an adage that a lot of trainers use, and that is, if you're gonna drink, don't eat. If you're gonna eat, don't drink. And this is kind of one way to also approach it and think about it. But you can also have the protein and the veggies, which seems like a really good idea, and you wanna choose lower sugar drinks by nature. And that is really the punchline of how to approach this thing. We believe here at the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project that a balanced life that you enjoy is what's gonna be most sustainable. Now, a question is, does alcohol have any health benefits? And I would say, yes. There is a particular kind of alcohol, red wine, that's very high in resveratrol. And what we found is some of the longest living cultures, these centenarians, these pockets of people who reliably live to 100 plus, they have alcohol as a part of their life. For example, in Sardinia, Italy, they make a particular kind of wine that is very high in resveratrol, a powerful antioxidant that has shown anti-aging and longevity benefits. So may there be a benefit of occasionally drinking a little bit of alcohol? Absolutely, there could be. If it is red wine, high in resveratrol. All the other kinds of alcohol, let's just say the vodka soda, it's not giving you any nutrition. It's just giving you calories, but it also could be giving you enjoyment in your life if that's something you do enjoy, which can keep you on track long-term. So we're always balancing this idea of a perfect, really strict regimen with something that's balanced that we enjoy. We recommend you fall somewhere in the middle. And of course, this comes down to your family history, your emotional history, your drinking history. Maybe alcohol might not be right for you, but if you're a person who does, does feel that you wanna enjoy the occasional drink, make sure you eat lean food, mostly protein and fiber. You keep the fats and the carbs out while you're drinking. You have no more than two drinks in that given evening. You don't drink more than once a week, and that's gonna be very good. And I wanna say this, I think a lot of people fall into the trap of relying on alcohol as a little bit of a nightcap to relax. It really does ruin your sleep. We've talked a lot about here on our channels how sleep is so important for good metabolic health. And if you do drink late at night, it actually decreases your REM sleep. It's gonna make your sleep a lot less efficient. And when you don't sleep well, you're actually hungrier the next day. You're a little more insulin resistant. Your blood sugar is a little higher. So that's something I would definitely avoid. Keep it to an occasional thing. Make sure you don't eat crap food while you're drinking. And that'll be a good way for you to move forward. Hope you enjoy this, my friend. You can enjoy stuff in moderation and still have a healthy, happy, balanced life. And of course, if you don't wanna drink, don't drink. But overall, I think it is good to understand the science of this stuff 
that our bodies do have this natural process of detoxing alcohol and that we should really be avoiding the sugars and the crap stuff that we throw in these alcohols and that's so we can enjoy responsibly. Thanks for being here, my friend. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up if you found this valuable and I'll see you around the channel and I'll talk to you very soon.